Thank you. Hello and welcome to another IV Care videocast. My name is Andrew Jackson and we're here today to talk about the checking of peripheral cannula sites. Intravenous therapy plays an important role in the care of patients who attend hospital for treatment. I'm sure most of you have cared for patients with peripheral cannulas in place. Unfortunately, some of you will have cared for patients with cannulas in place without even realising it. Why is this? IV therapy has been around for a very long time and unfortunately this means that it is sometimes taken for granted. Over recent years we have seen the transition of role boundaries in healthcare which has resulted in nurses being responsible for wider areas of IV therapy. This may lead to confusion around who does what, to the point where elements of IV care are overlooked. One particular aspect of IV care that is often overlooked is the monitoring and documentation related to the condition of the patient's cannula site. Why is it important to monitor cannula sites? This question is best answered by looking at a few photographs of IV sites that have gone wrong. These problems include bruising, phlebitis, infiltration, extravasation and infection. When you look at these photographs, remember that these are real patients who have suffered a dreadful outcome of peripheral cannulation. Ask yourself this, what part can you actively play in preventing problems such as these? Being active, or should I say being an activist in IV therapy, is one of the greatest contributions you can make to improving patient care. However, improvements in care need to be directed. We need to start somewhere, and I can think of no better place to start than with monitoring and documentation of your patient's cannula site. When you check a cannula site, you are monitoring the site for a number of reasons. These include monitoring the site for signs of infection, identifying early signs of phlebitis, ensuring that dressings are intact, cannulae are secure, and is removal or replacement necessary. This is confirmed by the Department of Health who insist in their Saving Lives document that we monitor cannula sites at least daily. The Visual Infusion Phlebitis Score is widely accepted as the tool of choice for monitoring cannula sites. The VIP Score, shortened name for the Visual Infusion Phlebitis Score, provides the practitioner with a tool that can describe the condition of the site. It also promotes an action based upon the result of the observation, for example, cannula removal. As a practitioner, you are responsible for deciding if a cannula site is healthy or showing signs of phlebitis. The VIP score helps you in your assessment and documentation. Healthy sites would show no signs of phlebitis. They would be described as zero on the VIP score. If only pain or redness exists near the cannula site, not both together, a VIP score of one would be documented. This result would advise the nurse to be extra vigilant at monitoring the cannula site, as the site may be demonstrating early signs of phlebitis. Finally, a VIP score of two or more would indicate that phlebitis has developed and cannula removal must be completed. Phlebitis develops progressively. It usually starts with pain and redness. The term we use to describe redness is erythema. As the phlebitic episode develops, swelling and in worst case scenarios a palpable venous cord and pyrexia are evident. As the swelling becomes worse and is firm to touch, we describe this as induration. And a palpable venous cord is hardening of the vein which can be felt along its length. It is important that cannulae are removed at the earliest confirmed signs of phlebitis so that advanced signs are not seen. Therefore, when you check cannula sites and the patient has a VIP score of 2, then the cannula must be removed and replaced. 
if you suspect an infection at the cannula site, the cannula must be removed, a swab taken of the site, and advice sought. In addition to checking the VIP score, you must also check the condition of the IV dressing. If it is loose or contaminated, it must be replaced. You must also determine if the cannula is still in use, or if it requires routine replacement due to the length of time it has been in situ. The length of time a cannula should remain in use is determined by national and local policy. This currently ranges between 72 and 96 hours. Finally, I'd like to close with a statement from Dutton, who in 1924 in a textbook wrote that A needle directly into a vein can be accomplished with perfect ease and safety under proper aseptic precautions, so that no scar or mark of any kind is left to indicate the site of injection. I strongly believe that we should continue this philosophy to the 21st century so that we can improve IV care. Thank you.